we can't change the world today if we keep saying that we'll change the world tomorrow. However, how can we change the world today when our lives seem to be dictated by school and homework? We go to school to succeed. We are told that if we don't get good grades, don't obtain a college degree, and never walk across that stage to accept that diploma, we are doomed to an unsuccessful, mediocre, and impoverished life. Our society revolves around the idea that complete high-quality education equals complete high-quality success. This idea can be, can be described by something called our society's success rule. The result, a society that suppresses creativity. If you ask me if I think of myself as a creative person, I wouldn't hesitate to tell you yes. I consider myself one of, one of the lucky ones because I was born into a home that teems with creativity. My father is a freelance interior designer who has his own business, Circus Studio, and my mom has always loved the arts. For me, creative writing is my number one passion. I write everything from short fiction, poetry, prose. My, I've always been very vocal about my dreams of becoming a writer to my parents, who have responded with enthusiastic encouragement. They read every piece of writing that I excitedly bring to them, help me edit my work, and always offer encouragement when I hit a writer's block. When I was in seventh grade, my mom realized how serious this dream of becoming a writer for me was, and she found me a writing coach. I am now a freshman in high school who has written her first novel. I started my novel in, the fall, in September of 2012, and I finished it this past June. Now, I'm not exactly ready to share it with people yet because it's still a first draft. I mean, even Mark Twain needed an editor, right? There's, th there's three things that contributed to the success of me being able to write my novel. One, the support of my parents. Two, was my passion. And three, dismissing the success rule and realizing that it wasn't actually the rule. When we look at the rule from the surface, it makes sense. According to the World Bank, educating girls is the most promising investment in third world countries. And when we look at people who escape poverty in the United States, we see over and over again how education played a key role, if not the biggest role, in helping those individuals escape poverty. How education is an important part to success. However, it isn't the key to success. The reason why it's not the key to success is that there's too many exceptions to the rule. People, there's too many people who have achieved success before graduating college, some before graduating high school, and some even before graduating middle school. People like this are people such as Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, or even Tabby Gevinson, who at, 13, who at 12 years old started her fashion blog, Style Rookie, and by the time she was 13, was invited to sit at the front row of New York and Paris Fashion Week, all because she started a blog. These people all share one thing in common, Creativity. Creativity is the loophole in the success rule. It's what makes the success rule false. Pablo Picasso once said, every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist once you grow up. As a child grows up and enters their middle school and early high school years, they begin to become self-conscious about their creative work, and they begin to start comparing themselves to other people. Now, as if this wasn't enough, they receive messages from parents, teachers, and other adults in their life, such as, creativity won't get you anywhere. 
or that art isn't a good career option because it won't make you any money. Um, J.K. Rowling is richer than the Queen of England, and I'm pretty sure that creativity was necessary in writing those Harry Potter books. So why, why does our society suppress creativity when it's obvious that it's necessary for success? The second thing that helped me write my novel was my passion. I love writing, and I could probably stand up here and tell you how much I love writing for the 10 minutes that I have. If you, if you ask me when did I discover that I loved writing, it was, it was when I was in second grade, which was the same year that I read my first chapter book by myself. I remember there was one night my mom had finished reading, reading to me before bed. She, put the she finished the chapter, closed the book, and put it on my bedside table, tucked me in, said goodnight, and went up to her room. That's when I pulled out my flashlight, pulled the covers over my head, and finished the book. That's when I fell in love with stories. And I realized that I wanted to share my own stories. I wanted there to be a kid just like me, in bed, with the covers pulled over their head, with their flashlight, reading a book that I had written. My passion was what, made, was what drove me to finish my novel, to spend a year and a half writing it, and it's what's gonna push me to finish editing it. And man, editing really terrifies me. <laughs> the third thing that helped me with finishing my novel was dismissing the success rule. Well, what does dismissing the success rule look like? As a parent, it looks different than what it would look like for a student. As a parent, it means asking your child, your student, or any other child in your life what they enjoyed about creating their work. It's not telling them at the end of their work, good job. There is no rating scale when it comes to creativity. Art is art no matter what you create. You can't be good at art and you can't be bad at art. You just do art. As a parent, it's important that you show interest. Because if you show interest in what your child or student is doing, that translates that they can be successful in that because someone cares about it. And when I talk about creating something, I'm not just talking about a painting or a song or a pottery piece. It could be a science project. It could be an essay you wrote about what you would do if you were president because Creativity relates to every professional field. Creativity is what helps us solve problems, and it's what helps us come up with new ways of approaching things, such as immigration reforms in our government, finding new sources of energy, and new ways of approaching cancer research. Creativity is important to success, and it's important that parents know that and make sure that their kids know that. It means finding your passion and finding what you love. And it means basically making a life out of that. Because if you do what you love, then you're never gonna have to work a day in your life. Today in our job world, only 13% of people say that they actually enjoy going to their jobs and that they're emotionally invested in their work. Only 13% of people in the whole world say that they like their jobs. So if only 13% of people like their jobs, doesn't that mean that only 13% of people possess passion that is necessary to drive the human race forward? The final thing that is important for a student to do in order to dismiss the success rule, is make your plans for tomorrow 
your plans for today. I could have waited until I was out of college to start writing my novel. I could have waited until I had, had English college-level English classes, college-level creative writing classes, and then I could have started my novel. But instead, I decided to start when I did, because I could. There was nothing really preventing me except for the fact that people said, you have to wait until after school. But you don't. I didn't, and I did it, and the world didn't end. <laughs> you make your plans for tomorrow, your plans for today, because you can't change the world today if you keep saying you'll change the world tomorrow. Thank you.